Okay, so we're now going to have the um, delayed presentation on interconnect verification from Francois Fizier of uh, TVS in France. And then we're going to move to the EDA panel, and then, uh, then we're going to give away all these lovely prisons. So our next talk is on interconnect verification. Um, I think we hinted at this during the presentation from Mark, uh, owner of uh, Mentor Graphics, about the the increasing complexity of our interconnect. And um, Francois is going to spend about 15 minutes on the verification challenge at Inconnect. Okay, 15 minutes. Because given the time, I thought I had two minutes. Okay, so yeah, this morning uh, there was quite a few um, slides uh, talking about the challenge of verifying uh, interconnect. So I'm going to actually explain uh, what we mean by this. Um, so we typically mean verifying this uh, yellow cloud here. Uh, so the interconnect uh, from the high level point of view is responsible of getting the communication between all the different IPs. We all know that. Now, the complexity of it comes from the fact that we are adding more and more to the interconnect. The interconnect is actually the central piece of the SOC, and the interconnect is different for each SOC. Uh, there is no real reuse as such uh, when we talk about the interconnect. And we are adding um, cash currency, we are adding power uh, features, security, so when we talk about the interconnect, we look at all the characteristics, uh, the features of an interconnect. It's not only about the communication anymore. Uh, it's also about the conversions from one protocol to another, from one bus size to another bus size. Uh, we need to deal with the memory maps. Uh, memory maps, we may have a shared memory map for all masters or to the extreme one memory map for each master. We need to deal with the address space, uh, which uh, is no longer only a physical address space. We have virtual address space with uh, virtual MMUs. Uh, we need to deal with cash currency, so the interconnect has features to, uh, to deal with uh, cash coherent uh, CPUs. And also, the interconnect has um, more and more dynamic configurations. All the error management is SOC specific. Uh, all the security is SOC specific. All the poor management features, like oh, if I want to actually send a transaction to an, an IP, which is to a slave, which is switched off, what happens? The interconnect should be able to handle this and either issue an error or some uh, and in terms of stuff like this. So the verification plan for the interconnect, strongly correlated to, to the previous slides, we need to I mean, verify the address map. This is the least we can do. We need to verify the protocol sanities. Have we covered all transactions from all masters on, uh, to all slaves? But mainly, we need to deal with SOC features. So we need to actually be sure that the secure transactions, for instance, has been sent to uh, secured and unsecured slaves. An unsecured transaction has been sent to secure or unsecured slaves for this step. Program management is the same. We need to verify all the features related to this. Cash currency. We also need to look at performance and be sure that um, we get the bandwidth necessary for the master to actually operate. But also, I mean, the, the interconnect as a central piece of the SOC, uh, we, we can't rely on a verification of the interconnect itself. We also need to verify the interconnect within the SOC. Use cases, uh, uh, so your project is coming from marketing. The marketing is selling specific use cases to the customer. We need to be sure that the interconnect actually can handle these use cases. So what I mean by routes on address map is being sure that uh, each master can actually 
send transactions to all the different slaves. So we need to generate transactions going there. Uh, we need to be sure that min and max of each segments are reached properly. If you go to formal, you can, you may cover the entire uh, address base. Uh, this is something left to the formal guys. If you talk about UVM, you will probably reach min and max of each segment plus a few uh, random addresses. From different masters, you may not reach all the slaves. Uh, you may have different, uh, different mapping for different masters. So you need to cover all of this. Now, when we talk about protocol conversion, so the interconnect uh, may deal with a few different protocols. So let's take a simple example. Here we've got an AXI transaction, uh, the transaction on the request side is one single transfer saying, oh, I'm going to read uh, a few bytes starting at address 5, and I'm going to use a burst of length 3. So I'm going to get a response of three transfers starting at address 5 and up to the address 17. This is what I'm going to get. Now, if you, if you have bridges in your interconnect and you end up in a different protocol, you actually, uh, you may actually get a transfer at the other side to the slave, which is actually a load 16 starting at the address 0, followed by a load 8 starting at address 10. It's still valid. You will read more values. You will read 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, but the, the first five bytes additional. The important thing is that you still get the, the address 5 to 1, 7. So this is obviously assuming there is no side effect uh, on the, at, at the other zero. But this is something that could be valid. Now, if you take the same transaction translated into a 32-bit bus, you actually end up with the same load 16 and load 8. But actually, uh, this load 16 could start at the other four. You would still get a valid result. So your verification environment should be able to handle this. So if you build a verification environment, you need to take care of this. So in terms of test bench requirements, you typically need verification IPs in it for each of the protocols with obviously a good protocol checker. You need a virtual sequence to actually control all the different controls masters because you will have uh, tens or 40, 50 different masters to control. So you will need to build a virtual sequence on top of your verification IP. You also need a scoreboard to actually check the transaction that is received at the slave interface is the one that has been sent by the master except that it might be in a different protocol. So it leads to the, uh, to the concept of uh, the interconnect scoreboard, which is slightly more complicated than a single scoreboard. And you need to do this uh, standalone to verify the interconnect or within the SOC to actually check the uh, integration of the interconnect. So standalone, you will do this because you've got um, the interconnect probably before the, the SOC. You can verify the interconnect out of the SOC context. However, uh, if, you really, uh, if you really want to verify the integration, you will need um, to use a, what we call a headless environment where you black box the different uh, IPs and drive directly the interfaces of the IP with the, your verification IP. So standalone test bench, uh, you just plug your verification IPs uh, to the different inter interfaces of your interconnect. Um, the headless environment, you actually use the SOC instance. You black box the IPs and you drive the interface not of the interconnect, but you drive the interface of the IPs. That makes the difference because you will see if there is any issue at the inter uh, integration level. 
cardboard requirements, so you need to be able to be connect to any kind of verification IPs. You need to be able to do end-to-end -end transaction checking, not only about the data, but uh, not the entire transaction. You need to support multiple other test maps. You need to support a configuration question. You need to support security for management features. Uh, all this stuff needs to be supported by the scoreboard, so it makes it uh, a little bit more intelligent. Um, uh, because of the protocol conversions, you may lead to different policies. Uh, so you need to either you check all specific bytes, or you have to are a bit more specific, permissive. If you look at the UVM manual, uh, you will get a very nice uh, introduction to how to build a single scoreboard between one master and one slave, and you will be able to check uh, transactions between one monitor going to another one. And now, if you talk about the interconnect scoreboard, uh, uh, it has more than that. You will need to deal with generic transactions, so to deal with generic transactions, to be able to deal with uh, any kind of protocols, you need to adapt the transactions to these generic transactions. You will need adapters. And you will actually need uh, one scoreboard per boot between each master and slave. You need all the configuration and so on. And that led us to actually build this uh, scoreboard, the interconnect scoreboard, as a verification IP which integrates all the features. We have adapters so that we can actually translate any protocol to the scoreboard protocol and then uh, check the um, transactions between masters and slaves. Now, this is good, but if you then talk about um, cash currency, the cash currency breaks the scoreboard uh, paradigm in the sense that a request that targets a specific slave might actually be responded not by the slave itself, but by another master. Uh, so you need to uh, build specific features for this. So actually we have added the scoreboard in the scoreboard to actually deal with the cash currency protocols. Uh, just a uh, quick slide, I'm uh, showing how it works. So the verification IP send the transactions to the adapters the adapters translate the protocol specific into the generic transaction and send it to the actual LSOC um, scoreboard. So just a quick example uh, to instantiate it, uh, create the different masters, device map, uh, add the masters to the actual device map, add the slaves, uh, then uh, add the path between masters and slaves, so just to configure the scoreboard. And connect the scoreboard to the different monitors. Uh, so the scoreboard also has uh, different um, features uh, to deal with uh, all the SOC specific features. Uh, so, protocol conversions is handled by adapters, dynamic address map through APIs, attributes through, uh, it is um, integrated, uh, but you can also use the factory to deal with different attributes. Uh, security power management uh, is handled through uh, user-defined methods, so you have placeholders to deal with this. Uh, it comes with functional coverage, comes with um, data that you can use to actually do your performance analysis. It comes with ACE uh, and internally supported. And uh, you can add features with placeholders. Uh, so we've used, I personally use this kind of um, uh, verification instrument and three derivatives an SOC interconnect uh, with over 40 masters and 60 slaves. Uh, the scoreboard development uh, has been a key point of this project. 
so we are now providing uh, the verification ID. The right architecture for the scoreboard is a key uh, enabler for the verification in the interview. So to summarize, um, the SOC interconnect needs to be, ver to be verified as such, uh, as any other IP. Uh, the ver verification environment should handle complex scenarios, uh, stress and congestion conditions, uh, randomizing different, different cases. The scoreboard uh, should be generic. And the scoreboard uh, allows quick test bench setup should be compatible with all any kind of the IPs uh, allow all the advanced features. <laughs>